All right. What's up, y'all? This is my first time uh, doing a live coding stream. Everybody wants to see people code and write code. And <laughs> so I'm going to do a live coding stream. I'll probably go for maybe like 30 minutes or probably to about 9 p.m. Eastern. But um, yeah, we're going to start uh, from scratch. So I'll show y'all. You know how I open up the project and how I use React in case you've never seen React before. Oops. Uh, doing a live code stream. Did not mean to do that. Just meant to share that. But um, yeah, let me get situated. Let me figure something out really quick. I thought there was a way for me. Uh, let me check something real quick before we start. Let's start some music, though. Let's start some music. And let me look at something really, really quick. All right. Let's share that. Let's share that for my personal. All right. All right, we're good to go. So we're about to get into some live coding. Um, I only got one monitor, so if you hop in here, I may not see you. Uh, it all depends, and I'm gonna be sharing my full screen. So I won't be looking at chat much. This is really quick. But yeah, all right, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to get into some code. But before we start coding, we do need to pull up a couple of links, a Google Drive link, and then there's a Trello board. There's a couple things that we'll be referencing as we code. So the goal tonight. And the reason I made this my first coding stream ever is because I just finished something. So I figured we could probably do like a teeny bit of code review and um, you can get a sneak peek at uh, some of the code that's on impactnigeria.org. We've been working on this since basically the last two weeks of August um, and all of September. And we did this as a part of Colab. And I've lost the link. I'll find the link to Colab later. But yeah, let's go ahead. I'm gonna share my screen. It's gonna look awkward for a second. All right, and now, yeah, that looks fine. I don't usually code with the music, so it's kind of distracting. Let me turn this down. Let's turn that down just a teeny bit. There we go. That's a nice beat that I made though. All right. I don't know who the one viewer is. Sorry, it looks weird. It's about to get normal though. So uh, we use a Trello board. As you can see, there's tons of stuff that we're working on. Now this card that I'm gonna work on tonight has been sitting here for a minute. So the goal is to do a little bit of code review and um, basically, we're going to look at this card, jump to the code, and um, review some of the code, and we may pick up a new card. It all depends on how this goes, really. So I've been working on a specific page. And um, this little checklist down here is all the things that I've done. <clears throat> and it's probably taking um, probably a couple weeks. Um, it's taking a while to get done. But the website itself is just getting started. So let's go ahead and let's get past that. No one cares about that stuff. Um, no, I don't want to update during the live stream. Let's type some stuff in really quick. Let's open a second tab, get into this terminal. And uh, from here, I'm just going to do my favorite thing. I should make that a bash. Um, yeah, I should make that a bash command. 
But all right, yeah, we got the, the app up now. And then we're gonna keep Google Drive up because I need to reference the mock-up. So, here's a mock-up. Also, someone let me know if, um, let me check chat really quick. Yeah, okay, we're good. But yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the um, this is the mockup. So this is pretty much what I'm designing. Except we're so early, we're not actually adding in certain things like the color. You can see this color right here. Um, the fonts are not in, like the fonts and typefaces; those aren't in yet. We do have icons in. We do have photos in because the photos are hosted on Cloudinary. So most of this stuff, it'll be pretty accurate. Sorry, I'm over snacking. But most of this, I've already gotten done. So let's take a look. We're working mobile first. Oh, you know what? That is one thing we can fix. We can disable strict mode right away. That might be something we need to do. But yeah, basically, I've been working on um, the page for organizations on the website. So locally, at least, you can actually click into this. Don't mind the red spew. And uh, this is what it looks like right now. So if you were to compare them, you know, just to look at them, like kind of zoom in on them. Zoom in on that. You can see we basically have like the skeleton of the page. And we're using uh, Material UI for this. So let's open up GitHub really quick. It's funny, my first coding stream, we're not actually doing a lot of coding. I'm gonna do some code review. Uh, we got a pull request, open for it. Open 25 days ago. Yeah, it's taking 25 days to get this done. Um, all right. And then I think our preview is live too. Let's see. Yeah, preview is live. And it doesn't look it doesn't look horrible on desktop. It's just not um, you know, we haven't added any uh any styling to the desktop view yet. But uh, yeah, let's. Take a look at some of this code. Ooh, I didn't mean to click that. Oh, we are leaving off some with some code. Okay. So this is where we were starting. We we're doing some refactoring. So the very last task that uh, we were working on was this. And I actually did do this, but I still need to fix it in one place. So this component that we're looking at here is actually this page. So when you look at this, you're actually looking at this. You see all of this, all of this code, all this code is just pulling data pretty much. We don't even have a real database actually right now. So what I have, um, set up right now is actually just a file and it's called mock data and uh yeah this is just in the project so until we leave the mvp stage this is where all the data in the app comes from because the website is basically it's basically just a database so you shouldn't need the internet every time um do i have flux on all right, there we go. Let's disable that. All right, so the last thing that we're doing is um, we made a, or I made a, uh, a helper function that is just gonna spit out these icons. So if you see in a mockup at the very, very top of the screen, you can see this little dollar um, icon. And what that means is that the organization on the website it's taking monetary donations. Some of them are looking for volunteers. 
Um, some of them are looking for monetary donations and uh, some of them are looking for stuff like food, food donations. They don't accept money at all. But for the most part, uh, all the organizations that we started with, they're all just accepting money for uh, various causes and stuff like that. But the very last thing that we need to add to this page pretty much is um, this icon. So what I need to do is I actually need to look through, and that's why this, this is file is not saved because I need to go into the mock data file and I basically need to look at what this object is gonna look like. So let's check that out really quick. Um, so each organization got like basic info for them, the name, um, this this links to uh, Cloudinary, this kind of setup uh, and another helper function that we use pretty often. And let's see. So we would say needs dot description basically because here what we want to say is whichever organization we're looking at on the page um, right before this text, right before that text right there, we actually want to show the icon and we want them to be kind of grouped together in a way. So we can say, oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the wrong thing. We're talking about needs type. It's based on the type, um, that's the type of icon that'll be spit out. All right. And I guess TypeScript is being weird. Is that what it wants? Expected two arguments, but got one. Oh. Let's make this. Let's give me that right now. And then let's make that optional. Oh, that's wrong. You're right. All right. That should be good to go. And where those needs are? We used it. Oh, yeah. So we did it, but we didn't use it in a component yet. So right above the description, we're going to put. Um, Icon. So we'll say needs icons. Thank God for IntelliSense. Also, let me check my phone really quick. Oh, only my wife is watching. Okay, I'm all concerned about um <laughs> people uh hopping in and stuff. But uh, yeah, just my wife is watching. All right, cool. We're Gucci. No one's tuned in. Um, all right. But yeah, this is how coding works. Now, this might look confusing to a lot of people, but honestly, this is not um, a big component. And um, depending on how people feel about this, I might actually switch the theme because this theme is it's meant for uh, me to be able to like easily distinguish between like lines and stuff like that. So, um, but you know, when you're talking about a big component, all this stuff can kind of blend in. But yeah, let's check, let's see, make sure nothing crashed. Oh, we already crashed. Cannot read property map of undefined. So I did something wrong. I did do something wrong. Um, or that needs that type. Let's see. I just replaced this in another spot too. What's that needs? Oh, that time it was a prop. All right. Um, good thing about code is that we don't really have to worry about why it's not working. So what we're gonna do is let's undo some stuff. I don't really care why it's not working, to be honest. I know that I'm being clumsy right now. And let's go back. And let's open up um, React DevTools right away. We're not going to waste a lot of time guessing here. 
So let's open up React Dev Tools and let's see if this data is even in here. Type. It is here. Okay. Is here. And then org data is, yeah, I have a lot of any, I'm gonna fix those over time. This, if you see this, this is not good. You should type your stuff. The only reason that I don't have certain things typed right now is because it's so early. But um, yeah, if you've never seen React before, basically uh, we're creating state. We start out with the empty object, but when you actually load the page, all of this stuff happens. So that's what use effect is doing. We're saying when we load the page, bam, do all this. So we grab the org, the data for the organization, and then we assign it on line 49 right here. And let's close, let's close that. We don't need that. But uh, I think I just made a change that was bad. Let me look at this again. Mm. All right, so we got the needs icons, yeah. Let's save and let's see what happens again. It's that helper function that I made that's breaking actually. All right, cannot read property map of undefined. It's a type error happening in line 26. Mm, this is a pickle. So a type error, a type error is not good. A type error means that um, whatever variable you thought you were using is is not working. So I might have used this wrong because um, needs should be an array. But it's saying it's saying as soon as we hit this, um, what we're what we're giving. These uh these arguments that we pass in, it's basically saying that this is empty. That's what it seems like to me, anyways. And I swear I just did this over here, didn't I? I need that kind. Yeah, I just did. All right, let's do this because we can always just undo this stuff. So let's do that. That'll cause uh, some issues. Bam, let's give classes to it, even though we don't use them. Let's reload. But you know what? It could be this right here. As a matter of fact, let me undo that and check. Yeah, you gotta be careful with these type errors because this is actually TypeScript. It's not a real error. So what it's saying is TypeScript is gonna quit if it doesn't see the needs property on this variable early enough. So I'm willing to bet if we ask TypeScript to check with the um, optional chain in operator, we'll probably be fine. Let's see. Otherwise it's trying to tell me something. Yeah, cannot read probably map of undefined, same here. Yeah, it's trying to tell me something here. Classes, yeah, that's fine. I wonder if I can just make that optional. Let's keep that optional, we don't need it. All right, uh, what is going on here? Um, all right, we're just gonna have to console log. We don't have access to something when we need it. So let's do this. When you get stuck like this, just wanna, we're gonna start console logging right away. Um, let's Man, let me double check this again. Man, let's double check. Um, how that is and react again. Okay. All right. 
I'm always looking at HDS child. Let's put somebody else in. Let's put Teach for Nigeria on the, on the screen. Cannot read property type of undefined. Oh. It's almost like even referencing that is crashing us out. Hmm? That just crashed out on the console log. Okay. Oh, let's see. Right. Okay. I don't know if, if my component should be reloading itself that many times, but yeah, I get what that means. Mm -hmm. I see what's happening. Though. I ran into this this issue earlier. All right. Um, let's just say. Let's do that. So right here we're saying um, these icons, it's gonna be actual icons or nothing. That'll at least stop us from erroring out. Um, let's see if that actually gets it to appear though. That's the scary part. Then let's bring that back. Or if it just crashes out again, it might just crash out again. Yeah, this is too early. Let's do this. We'll forget on something. And what we're going to do here. is an old trick I learned in my internship. So what we're saying is um, the property that we need is actually nested under something. So if we were to look at this as an example, right? You can see each organization is an object, right? And basically we have an object and an object called needs. And then inside of needs is the type. So what happens is when you first when you when you first load this component in React, your timing is going to be off. Um, basically, none of these properties that I'm trying to reference are going to exist. So stuff like this, it's not going to exist. Um, stuff like this is also not going to exist. And uh, every once in a while, what will happen is you actually get caught up. You get caught up in, in these kind of like timing issues where you get these type errors because the variables aren't ready yet. So you can try doing that. Let's do that. I think some of this stuff is going to hoist itself. So I'm not sure reordering any of this actually matters, but let's see. Yeah, we still got our error. Cannot read property need of undefined. Okay. And that is in line 50. Yeah, I don't know why I'm having so many issues with it in this component. It's pretty weird. We'll keep experimenting with it. Let's see. Really thought that would do the job right there. Cannot read property need. Oh, wow. Let's just start over, man. This is horrible. Jesus Christ, what happened? Yeah, let's just start over. What's happening here? Because we have this on another page and it's fine. So let's just let's copy paste this. It's a default function, okay. Let's just do this after. Oh, and you know what else? 
Yeah, we take the needs array in right here. Okay, we'll let that auto import. All right, let's try again. Let's just let's just keep it here. And I'm gonna render it. Cannot read property type of undefined. Okay. That type error is killing me tonight, bro. I'm passing it, I'm not passing it good data. Time is going haywire. Time is it. Let's close that. Yeah, something's going haywire. Let me check chat really quick. It's a nice little beat that I made too. All right, let's close this really quick. Well, it's just so weird that it's like here. It's in here. By the time it's finished loading. State. Needs. Type. I ran into this issue. I don't remember how I fixed it over here. I don't remember where I ran into it at. But uh, what can we do? You know what? I'm gonna just take the easy way out. Let's do that. I don't think if statements are block scope, so this should be cool. Matter of fact, let's just one line it. I don't care. Oh, it's kind of ugly without the brackets done. Let's bring those back. All right. And then Oh, you know what might be happening? Yeah, I, I didn't finish this. Um, I see a big glaring issue here. I don't have it. If I don't pass these classes in, it's over. All right, so let's refactor this really quick. Because uh, these classes don't exist. So, yeah, let's, let's take care of that. Let's copy paste a bunch of this and then we'll just put back in what we need um, and the tools. Right. Make styles, important. Here we go. And then I'm lazy. I don't feel like typing that. <laughs> I try not to type. All right. Now you can see why this is like a mega function, right? This is a pretty big one. But we don't actually need all that stuff. It's just styling CSS and stuff like that. Classes is already defined. Oh, all right. Well, I'm about to break a lot of stuff with that. Right, let's take this out too. Here we go. Really? Just need to react function or react function component. Oh, I guess we can't do that. Okay. We're just running out of brick walls tonight. Forget it. All right. Let's Let's just undo everything and start over. It's easier to just start over from a good spot than it is to keep 
um, arguing with JavaScript because JavaScript is going to win every time. Um, yeah, I've run into that problem a couple of times. I really don't know what it is. All right, let's bring this back. I have other lines that do just fine. Let's see. So I guess to get around that, we'll just make sure that every component that does use this as a um, classes that is going to cause an issue if they don't. So let's import this again. I'm reading this wrong. I'm pretty sure there's been a typo this whole time. Needs that type. Yeah, that error is happening. Uh, that error is happening as soon as the component is loaded, which is pretty weird. Because um, it should be able to wait. It should be able to wait just like we wait for these. Because we're saying if org data exists, then we're going to do this. And if not, then TypeScript will still react to back off of this query. If it turns out to not be real, if it doesn't work. And I get why I'm saying that too, because we can't still out there earlier and it is undefined. I fixed it somewhere else. Um, I just don't remember where. I think it was in this component. Mm. So we got that optional chain everywhere because I have no type, no types anywhere. So I want to fix this. A little. So this is just giving us hell tonight, man. Even though it's in the component by the time we need it. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Make my variable, please. Cool beans. Slot in here. But not generating these that kind of just not there. Wait, are you serious? Are y'all saying that if statements have block scope or uh, if statements have function scope? Do we need to Google this? Really? Shit. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I'm right. But now saying this variable's never been used. You know what? I'm tired. I just want to get this. I was just catching up. Okay. Boom, we finally got that dollar sign. But it is pretty far. And that is because of some styling that I've added. So let's bring it in. Ooh, that's not what I want. That's a good one. Yeah, 
Foi um ano sem time. Oh, the category starts here. Okay. I see. That's what the issue is. I just need to add a div. I know the div looks empty, but um, any divs that get added uh, in this component, they get a class stuck onto them. I'll show you in a second. Let's see how that looks. <laughs> it's not the mock-up, but hey, it's on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, how are we doing on time? All right, so we got about 10 minutes. That's a good refactor. Um, and that is what coding is like. So since we know that works and it looks decent enough, let's go ahead and make a commit. We're going to say use at that and we'll commit that uh one more change we probably need to make before i stop tonight is we're in strict mode so let's just disable that while i'm here it is it. yeah let's just disable that it's been throwing errors like crazy i don't know what to do with it anymore Oh. oh, I saw what I did. Okay. That's that syntax. Okay. I accidentally took out that uh comma. That's why I was acting weird. Um, okay. All right, and the last issue that we get is this one, but this is only happening because of something to do with Google, I think. Let's see. All page content must be contained by landmarkers. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is, but what are you talking about? Some page content is not contained by landmarkers. Dude. Don't even come at me like that. Hold on, man. Are you right? That should be a footer. Okay, 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 okay. You win, you win, you win. All right, let's fix that too while we're here. So basically what it's saying is, um, well, Let's talk first about what this is. This is called React X. It's React Accessibility. So it's gonna give me warnings if I do things that I shouldn't do. So um, basically, landmarks are kind of like your header element, your main element, your footer element, all the um, super important semantic elements that you have to use in HTML. And what I was just looking at just now, because, um, you know, I take the uh, accessibility stuff super seriously. So I thought that this was like a footer, but it's just a section. So I guess in that case, the robot is right. So let's update that. And then we can end the stream in a second here. Um, which one is that? It's called subscribe. Hey, for, uh, that's a mistake right there. Yeah, that's the mistake. All right, but I think we're going to fix this in the page. I think this means that I'm missing something in the page. Yeah, I'm missing this. Um, yeah, we're missing that. That's exactly what we're missing. So let's just copy paste that. Command shift K, delete. And then I'm going to paste it back in. All right, so that should go away. Yeah, there we go. All right, and the last thing, let's take out that console log. I forgot. Uh, I used to get on me about that at the internship, leaving the console log in. Yeah. 
All right. And we've been going for probably about 30 or 40 minutes. So um, I think that was a good first stream. We got stuck on some stuff, which is always good. And then we got everything working and then we cleared all these errors out of the right side. So the last thing to do is let's finish these commits and let's actually push this through tonight. This has been out for 25 days. So I'm gonna get it in there. All right, so the first one, we're gonna remove console long. We're gonna disable strip mode. Boom. And I don't like using VS Code's terminal because I just like to write code there. <laughs> so <laughs> right, I'm ahead by three commits. I'm gonna push. Y'all can't see my password. All right, and last but not least, what we're gonna do is let's go to GitHub and let's push this through. We need this on the live site. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. This is the longest that I've had like an open pull request out for anything. All right, let's quickly review this. We changed a lot of files because we're so early. You, When you first starting out, you change a lot of stuff. Um, let's see. Oh, we added the route. Okay. That makes sense. Um, we deleted a lot of stuff. So we did a lot of refactoring here. So this is all the stuff. Uh-oh. It's not a bad beat. Let's start these over. But yeah, we, we, we did a lot of refactoring. So a lot of stuff has been taken out. Like all of this stuff now, this is actually um, a helper function. So this makes uh, the cloud near URL. So if you were to go on a site and look at a picture and inspect this, you can see that this has like a pretty long URL. And um, that is what Generate Cloudinary URL is doing. And that's why um, all of this stuff is gone because I found out that, you know, I started repeating myself too many times. So I, the second time I put this in a component, I just went ahead and refactored. Uh, the needs icons also um, needed to be refactored because I'm reusing those. That could still do with a bit more work, but it's so early, you can't really be a perfectionist in the beginning. Um, stuff like that. This is just the changes that happen after refactoring. And we made some text clickable. So we reviewed that. Um, that's pretty cool. I don't care about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this was a big feature. We had to, so before, if you go to um, the actual website, the live site right now, right? Um, you can't click these. None of these, um, none of these are actually clickable. So there was there was a lot of work that went into this uh, feature because these ne that needed to be clickable. Uh, this needed to be clickable and they needed to actually go to the org page. That was the feature. So what you see in here is pretty confusing, but um, basically uh, we're using Material UI. So we just make the text clickable. If I don't have the organization's name for whatever reason, like if um, something just doesn't work, then we just display a placeholder, which is always better than displaying nothing. Always have a placeholder. It's so easy to do. You can just literally add a or statement and then a short circuit. If this variable isn't defined, we'll always display this one. Um, and then down here, this all changed. Yeah, we just moved this variable here. What else did we do? Oh yeah, we viewed that. And the index, we just disabled strict mode. Mock data, we updated the mock data. And this entire file is new. And the entire org page is also new. So 
Let's double check. Yeah, that's good. We need to get this through. <laughs> this is what developers do at work anyway. All right. So I don't have to review them as my repo. I can do whatever I want. But I still like to at least skim over the code and uh, always check like the console before I do that. So what we're going to do is we are going to check that. We're going to move this to done. Uh, I think we're going to take that next. And all right, let's go ahead and push this through. All right, let's delete the branch. And then before you stop for the night, always, um, always, 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 always um, check back out to um, your main branch and just do a pull. Just always, always stay up to date. Ooh, I typed my password wrong. Updates were rejected. Oh, good pull. Oh, that's what I typed actually. Whoops. I mean, a get push. Okay, so now what will happen is locally, we've got this page on the master branch, not on my feature branch. And then if we go to Netlify, um, it kicks out these builds pretty quick. So it should already be live, but let's check. Nice publish at 902. Oh yeah, we're finished. Yeah. It's up there. All right. So this is a um progressive web app though. So a lot of the time what you gotta do is go to the website, either refresh it and then close the tab and reopen it. So let's see, are these clickable yet? No, it's not, so we need to close this tab. <laughs> Probably, huh? I hope not. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. When you close the tab, uh, the Progressive Web app will basically like reinstall itself. And if we check, we should see. I'm forgetting my hotkeys now. But we should see. Um, oh, it didn't say anything. I missed it. Okay. That's cool. But yeah, now we're on impactnigeria.org. I'm not on I'm not on localhost anymore. And as you can see, boom, it works. So this is what we're eventually going for. That's what we'll get to eventually. And uh, this is how we're starting out. So yeah, good first stream. I'm glad we got stuck on uh, those type errors because a lot of the time, um, that's the stuff that people write in the Stack Overflow about a lot. It's like type errors, reference errors. The things that have to do with variables that don't exist tend to be the, the most confusing. But uh, yeah, this is uh, impactnigeria.org. It is live. You can go and browse it on your own and look at it and everything. It's mostly a database. There's nothing really client side that you can mess with or mess up. So feel free to go in there, poke around, check out the website. Uh, so I always develop on the smallest, the very, very small, smallest size. But um, yeah, we have we have certain pages like the about, oh, con I guess the contact pages, and then yeah, since I hit a four four. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so good first stream. Let's go ahead and switch. All right. Uh, wow, who's the second viewer? Let's see if I can see you. A second viewer came in and didn't say anything, or is StreamYard just tripping? Um, okay, I don't see anyone commenting or anything. But uh, yeah, good first stream. I'll do more coding streams. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing a coding stream on Facebook or YouTube. It depends on where people are. If Facebook doesn't make it easy for me to just download this video, then I'm just going to do them on YouTube. And 
everything live or go on YouTube or Twitch. But uh, yeah, great first coding stream. And uh, yeah, I hope to do more. And I think people will probably start popping in and paying attention um, the more that we do these. So stay tuned. We'll probably be Tuesday and Thursday nights after six. I don't I don't have um, the time down pat yet, but generally that's when they'll be after six. That's what everyone on LinkedIn voted for. But LinkedIn didn't approve my request to live stream there. Otherwise, I would be streaming there. So um, stay tuned. We'll have a lot of code and stuff. I'll throw in like some personal projects, but we can always work on Impact Nigeria on the stream pretty much like every day. But uh, yeah. Oh, I'm the second viewer. Silly, because I'm watching it on my phone. But yeah, uh, I'm Adrian Ross. I'm a web developer. My website is adriantotross.com. And if you want to see more coding stuff, just stick around. It's everywhere. Peace.